Hello there, gentle folk on the internet. For those who don't know, recently Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising received quite a major balance patch in version 1.5. So today we're just going to be quickly going over the changes that my lovely man Vane has. As you can see, it's a list. We're going to go through them one by one, talk about them, what they can now be used for, what's different, and then show off at the very end some example combos that can be done with some of these changes. So first up boys, we have Vayne's Dash H or his 66H, whichever you prefer to say. The first change that they made to it is that it is, or its recovery has been reduced by two frames, changing frame advantage from minus six to minus four. What this means is this attack, Dash Heavy, is no longer punishable on block for whatever reason. It's minus four, that's technically throw punishable, but as you can see, this naturally pushes Vayne away, so they cannot throw punish it no matter what they do. It is completely safe on block now. The second change they made to it is the lateral knockback on the third hit has been increased. This means they go flying further off the third hit. The good thing about this is this new position it puts it at is a perfect spacing for this 214L meaty that I just missed time and again, but you get the point. This is ideal spacing to just lay that on their corpse. Next up on our list of changes, we have Jump U, specifically what Jump U does on counter hit. The first change is it now causes foe to fall backwards on grounded counter hit. This is a situation that will seldom come up in my experience and opinion, but if you ever get a grounded counter hit of this attack, as you can see, they now fall on the ground. What you can do with this is kind of a, uh, Kind of just what you're about to see right here, which is this. This is guaranteed now on counter hit. Again, this is a situation that's not really ever going to come up. You can do this with any strength of it pretty much, and it's going to just do it. Um, and then if you're in weird scenarios like right here, as you can see, uh, this is probably never going to come up, but you can still get a combo here and do stuff with that. It's realistically never happening. The second more important change is on anti-air, also known as air-to-air, because -air, that's what JU is primarily for, the knockback on counter hit has been adjusted, causing wall bounce even when used mid-screen. Literally what this means, just that. It's a wall bounce. What that means for Vayne is very easy access to pickups, depending on spacing and what have you. You'll be able to get all sorts of different pickups. Um, I'm not as good at these pickups yet as I'd like to be, but there's all sorts of pickups you can do with it. Technically, I could have went to you in the 623H there. To, or like to you into an alt skill. You get the point. There's all sorts of weird pickups you can get from it. And in my opinion, the best application of this JU change is someone jumps in you. You don't want to risk an Annie for whatever reason. Just jump back with it. Because it already pushes him back naturally. So you can just do that. And stuff like this raw. And just kind of meme on them. So you get the point. The third change we're going over is M Wild B, also known as 236M, aka this button. The startup distance has been decreased, or startup, forgive me, has been decreased from 19 frames to 18 frames, and the travel distance before active frames has been slightly increased. What this means, just from that little change they made, is one, you get the auto combo into it, whatever you want now, two, all of his far-reaching normals, or medium normals and above, I should say, will combo into this now. Which is actually a huge deal for Vayne, as this is a very strong frame trap tool. This is a very good pressure tool. This is a very strong combo ender, because it leads into this situation all the time. As you can see, the space it puts them at. You can go for 214M meaties. You can hit them with it and just set up and camp a little bit whatever you want moral is the m wild beat change is just very good all around for his combo structure or i should say his pressure structure and single hits into it next on our list will be one of the genuine what i think is biggest changes for this character that's gonna benefit him in the long run and that is m arm destruction this is also known as 623 m dp motion m it is this the changes to this is the midair hit stun is increased from 60 to 80 frames, so it's an additional 20 frames of hit stun, preventing midair recovery when hitting high in the air. And I'll read the second one right away because they're both relevant at the same time. The launch height has been increased. What this means for M arm destruction is any time that 
M arm destruction hits an opponent in any condition, it is a guaranteed combo starter or follow up or combo continuation, depending on which scenario you hit it. Obviously, M arm destruction is situational. You only really get it on anti airs or certain combo setups or counter hits. But in the scenarios where it does happen, I'll give you a quick showcase of what the new launch height might enable. This is something I end up doing a lot. You start doing stuff like this once I don't drop it if you catch them high enough. You start getting silly nonsense like one of these. Um, all because of that new launch height that they gave it. Don't worry, we'll be talking about combos as well at the end of this video. I'll have chapters if you want to skip there for whatever reason. So you can kind of see the weird combos and applications of stuff like this. Moving right along, we have H Arm Destruction. This is literally just a heavy version of Arm Destruction 623H. The change for this is lateral knockback has been decreased, allowing mid-screen follow-up. It basically says what it does. It allows it that you can now use H Arm Destruction for mid-screen conversions, such as this. That that's really it. It's a small change, but it is a very effective change for his combo structure because now we can actually start doing things like this. And let's say you catch someone at a round start position, you will start being able to do things like this. Just like that. All those types of things. There's not much to talk about with it. That's a, it's a combo fluff tool or a combo starter tool. So we'll talk about that or showcase it later in the video. Now we have the energy destruction series this is his 214x series aka these buttons um all four of them have changes to them we're starting with 214l the light version the recovery has been reduced by six frames changing frame advantage from negative six to zero frames what this means is it is no longer punishable on block that is it if they block this they are not allowed to punish it even if you are right in their face you have to contest your turn in whatever way you want to, whether you want to go for a throw, a DP, you want to jab them if they if you block it directly in their face. But what it also means is at further spacings, where you want to be using it anyways like this, they really don't get to do much of anything. It creates a situation where you can space trap with stuff like this. If they would have tried running at me there, they might have been hit, depending on the button they want to press they might have been hit if i do something like this and this and they jump i have time to any year after that yet so on so forth and that's just one of these three changes the second change is hit stop has been reduced by six frames so just the hit stop you know when you hit them it's a reduced by six frames it's fine it's whatever that's just a slight adjustment the third change which is extremely important in my opinion is increased ground bounce height on counter hit what this means is anytime you clip someone with this, depending on spacing, forgive me, there are almost always follow-ups you can get as I mess up the timing. There we go. There's all sorts of different timings, or not timing, spacings for different combos. 6-6-H is good for longer distance pokes with it. As you can see, that's about 15 to 20% of someone's health. If they get hit by that, if for some reason they get hit point blank, you get to start doing other things. We'll talk about that stuff more later on though. Now we have M energy destruction ground. I should have specified the clip right before this is also the grounded energy destruction, just as a heads up. But yes, this is the M ground, this, or grounded energy destruction, which is this one. It's the one where he leaps, 214M. It has all the same exact changes pretty much as the L version, it is now zero on block, so they cannot punish it. It has increased ground bounce height on counter hit. And then the one change that is slightly different is the hit stop and ground bounce height have been adjusted, increasing window for follow ups. Meaning, as it reads directly, it has a an increased time essentially, or an increased window for follow ups because M ground or M energy destruction always gave some form of follow-up no matter what that's just the nature of how this button works historically uh but now on counter hit because of the adjustment just like you saw in the last clip slightly depending on spacing you start getting way more heading over to h arm destruction or energy destruction grounded forgive me 
H this button. It only has one change, the lateral knockback has been reduced. What this means is if you ever hit a scenario where it actually connects with someone, you might be able to get a combo depending on spacing. That's basically what it translates to. So if for some reason you're in their face, let's say you get a heavy starter that isn't a counter hit, you can start doing things like this and so on and so forth um, and all that. That, that's pretty much it. It just creates more combo filler. If you auto combo, it doesn't confirm, but if they get hit at the end by it, you'll have the chance right there for the same exact combo, so on and so forth. Ending the Grounded Energy Destruction series, we have U Energy Destruction or 214U. This button, it only has one change, which is an increased ground bounce height. Is a very funny chain it enables a lot of silly shit uh one of my favorite is knowing that you can do this depending on what the spacing is when you catch them which it's silly but it is 30 percent of their health if they ever get hit by that and sometimes there are scenarios where they do just get hit by a 214u in a certain spacing or certain combos which again we'll, we'll show that later moral is this change is just more for combo follow-up now we have the only change made that any of his mid-air energy destructions, which is U energy destruction mid-air, also known as J214U. Recovery when landing after a whiff has been increased by 10 frames. This is actually just an outright nerf. It means if you ever do this and you whiff, you have 10 frames more of recovery, making it very easy to be punished. But to be honest, this is something you aren't doing too often in my experience and opinion unless you're doing big dick throw baits like this uh run up and stuff like this which even then it's a little love tap of damage realistically but you get the point on with you can perish for that now as well as just any way you might use it such as this to maybe bait annie airs or stuff like that which would be the other purpose for it by the way you'd be using it to bait things that's about it but on whiff you die now so we're actually just going to go over the all the one for all changes all at once because they're pretty simple to explain in general one for all which is 22x this series the shield's rare side now has armor against projectiles i have not found a time personally where that change mattered myself maybe it'll be somewhere Maybe it involves something like a Cag Spike, a Beatrix Pillar, or not Beatrix Pillar, a Versusia Pillar. I'm not too sure. But the shield's rare side now has armor against projectiles. Good to know. Then we have the change to U one for all or 2 to you. This. The shield's active frames having been increased from 90 frames to 120 frames, so it stays out for 30 frames longer or an additional essentially half a second which is pretty good as it's a very good space control device and oki tool um and it just stops almost everything in the game and the shield's travel speed has been adjusted so now the speed at which it travels out is different as to whether it's faster or slower i honestly didn't use this tool enough last patch to really confirm or deny whether it's moving faster or slower if i base off everything else probably faster but again it's not a tool i really utilized last patch i didn't really utilize it until this patch and now for the final change bane has gotten in this patch breakthrough which is 5u travel distance for attack after absorbing hits has been increased it, it's pretty self-explanatory as it reads. It is literally just the travel distance of it is now further. As you can see, he, he moves further after absorbing it. Um, the, the dilemma is this, in my experience, this, this button is still kind of like, it's kind of a whatever. It's, it's To me, it's really not a good button. There's seldom times where I find myself wanting to do it because even as you see at the spacing, it's very hard to get that punish off. Like right there, it did not punish. I let it go too early there, so I died. You see what I mean? His 5U, still kind of a meme, unfortunately. Um, 
unless you press it super early and let it go and all that whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that that's it. It moves further now, so there might be certain situations where it helps, like, I guess, forward moving or forward advancing specials that you can react to, like a maybe a Sori's dash punch, a Catalina stinger if she's doing an M stinger or something like that. Maybe then it'll see use, but 5U is 5U. It's arguably the weakest tool in his kit, so it is what it is. <laughs> 